In this video session, we would like to propose a new assisted reproductive technology entitled Chromosome Transfer in Mature Oocytes. On April 24, 2009, a set of healthy twins were born and named Mido and Tracker. They are the world's first primates derived by chromosome transfer using metaphase II stage oocytes. They represent an important primate model of mitochondrial gene replacement therapy. The news of their birth quickly spread throughout the world via newspapers, scientific journals, and international documentary TV programs. This exciting novel procedure, chromosome transfer, just may be the key that will help to prevent faulty mitochondrial transmission in families burdened with mitochondrial disorders. At this time, there are no known cures for mitochondrial disorders and mitochondrial DNA disease. Transplantation of the genetic material between mammalian oocytes offers many opportunities to study various aspects of nuclear cytoplasmic interactions during oogenesis, fertilization, and embryonic development. For example, if you split and transfer the same nuclear material into two different cytoplasts, you can directly compare cytoplasmic function between two different animals. Our technique is quite universal, meaning that this technique can be applied without further adaptations to other species, including mice, domesticated, agricultural animals, and humans as well. We believe that this technique can be applied directly to interspecies gene swapping. Hopefully this technique will also help make interspecies oocyte donation a reality sometime in the near future. In a clinical setting, for those patients that may have experienced multiple IVF cycle failure due to ooplasmic defects or have had mitochondrial disease, whole oocyte donation from healthy women was likely their common way to produce a healthy child. Unfortunately, in cases such as this, the child receives approximately half of their genome from a genetically unrelated woman. As opposed to whole oocyte donation, our technique offers cytoplast donation from oocytes free of any nuclear genetic material. Donated oocytes that are devoid of all chromosomes following the enucleation procedure provide only cytoplasts containing healthy mitochondria. The process of isolating the nuclear genetic material from the patient's own oocytes ensures that the defective cytoplast and faulty mitochondria are left behind and not transferred to the reconstructed embryo. Using our novel technique, Isolated metaphase II stage chromosomes contained within the karyoplast can then be fused with healthy donor cytoplasts. A child born following fertilization with a husband's sperm would be free of risk of any and all maternal mitochondrial DNA mutations, and of utmost importance, would truly be the authentic biological child of the patient. Chromosome transfer requires only a few special reagents and pieces of equipment in addition to those found in a standard clinical IVF laboratory. Cytochalasin B is required during the initial micromanipulation steps of the chromosome transfer procedure to prevent lysis of the karyoplast or cytoplast. Inactivated syndivirus is one of the key materials for our technique and is used specifically to induce membrane fusion between the isolated karyoplast and cytoplast. Chromosome isolation utilizes larger pipettes compared to commonly used ICSI pipettes. This technique also requires a non-invasive spindle visualization system as well as oocyte compatible glass bottom dishes instead of standard plastic dishes. This figure shows the entire micromanipulation system. In addition to the standard operating settings, our technique requires a PC equipped with a laser operating system and the oocyte spindle imaging software. A CRI camera and the Zyklone Red Eye Laser 20X objective are also required. Chromosome transfer consists of two major micromanipulation steps. The first step involves the isolation of metaphase II chromosomes contained within the karyoplast. To make another set of chromosome-free donor cytoplasts, one must follow in the same manner. First, immobilize an oocyte using the holding pipette with the sharpest spindle image situated in the equatorial plane closest to the 3 o'clock position. Now, focus the objective on the spindle and bring the tip of the isolation pipette to the same focal plane. Second, navigate the holding pipette with an attached oocyte to the visible red-eye 
Laser target and position this target on the zona pellucida and drill a hole in its outer layer next to its spindle using the lowest laser setting. Third, slowly insert the pipette through the slit in the zona pellucida and slowly aspirate the spindle with a minimum amount of the underlying cytoplasm into the isolation pipette. The next step involves transferring the karyoplast back into the donor cytoplast. First, gently expel the karyoplast from the pipette into the drop with the HVJE and allow it to soak for approximately 10 seconds. Aspirate the karyoplast again into the pipette and return the pipette to the first manipulation drop containing the donor cytoplast. Second, immobilize the donor cytoplast with the first polar body positioned at 9 o'clock but avoid holding over the hole in the zona made previously during spindle isolation. Drill the hole in the zona on the opposite side which is approximately at the 3 o'clock position. Third, insert the pipette through the zona slit and gently eject the karyoplast into the paravitellin space. This video shows step-by-step -step manipulations of the entire chromosome transfer procedure. The spindle chromosome complex is usually invisible under the standard microscope. Fortunately, the oocyte system allows for the visualization of the spindle without any adverse effects. Mature metaphase II stage oocytes are devoid of mitochondria in the spindle chromosomal complex. Thus, isolation of the chromosomes can be accomplished without significant mitochondria carryover from the patient's eggs. To find and position spindles, it is essential to rotate the oocyte. We recommend that you spend an adequate amount of time rotating an oocyte. It is also important that the enucleation pipette and spindle are in the same equatorial focal plane during the micromanipulation steps. To test this, gently poke an oocyte using the pipette without piercing the zona pellucida. You should be able to see that poking moves the spindle away. If you make excessively large sized slits in the zona pellucida, it will cause cytoplasmic leakage during karyoplast transfer and during subsequent fertilization by ICSI. Aspiration of chromosomes contained within karyoplast requires careful manipulation. A desirable sized karyoplast as well as an excessively large sized karyoplast are depicted on the side of this image. Soak an isolated karyoplast in the HVJE drop briefly. Hold the donor cytoplast with the first polar body positioned at 9 o'clock, but avoid holding over the hole in the zona made previously during spindle isolation. Gently insert the pipette into the paravitellin space and eject the karyoplast. This figure indicates good and poor contact between the karyoplast and the cytoplast. Fusion should occur within 20 to 30 minutes. As you can see, the karyoplast has successfully fused to the donor cytoplast and the transferred spindle chromosomes remained intact at the metaphase II stage without undergoing resumption of meiosis due to premature activation. Reconstructed oocytes are capable of normal fertilization as seen by the second polar body extrusion following ICSI. In vitro developmental potential was similar to that of controls. We are proud to say that our novel technique generated embryos that result in a high embryonic stem cell derivation efficiency, as well as the establishment and maintenance of successful full-term pregnancies, all the while not producing any adverse effects. And of even greater importance, this technique did not produce any detectable spindle donor mitochondrial DNA heteroplasmy. Here we provide several key details and suggestions for what we believe is a truly successful chromosome transfer procedure. To be able to succeed at this procedure, we firmly believe that diligent practice is a must. We cannot emphasize it enough. Practice, practice, in practice. Doctors Masahito Tachibana and Shukrat Metalipov developed and conducted all of the chromosome transfer procedures. We would like to thank everyone at the Oregon National Primate Research Center for their support of this research. Thank you very much for your attention.